there's no camera on this one which I'm sure some of you will be absolutely pleased to know and this is a rather lengthy video I am fully aware but hey it's not like I do many of these anyway this is a sort of test run on legendary tidal basin as you can see I was invited along to join in by some absolute giants within the game which I am kind of still confused by like every single person well minus me the other three here are like established world record holders and speedrunners and some of the best players in the game right now but they wanted little old me to tag along <laughs> absolutely held them back 100% carried hashtag me anyway Tidal Basin Legendary is kind of a weird beast. There are moments where it feels like it's far too much and there are moments where it doesn't feel like it's enough. I still stand by that my weird take on Legendary is the AI is beyond dumb. I do know some people that say the AI is actually quite smart. However, I like to use the term Mong Strength. They know they hit really hard. They know they're really tanky. It's not smart AI for them to go, <laughs> if I just bum rush you, you can do nothing about it. I would personally would prefer, I don't mind the fact that they do more damage or the fact that they are that tanky. It's legendary difficult after all. I would prefer if they utilized cover a lot more, moved around in cover, actively tried to flank you while remaining in cover, actually almost made it like they were looked like a polished military tactical unit. Instead, they kind of run around like a ragtag bunch of hooligans and just sort of bum rush you because they know they can. To me, this isn't an engaging way to play, but that's just me. Overall, though, the legendary experience on Tidal Basin is actually really fun. There are a lot of cut and dry moments, a lot of harsh moments and some moments where you're just absolutely able to steamroll the enemy depending on your composition as well as the team play that you have. It was fun to say the very least up until the final boss which is not actually included in this video simply because things went very wrong and then what ended up being near enough on track for like a 30 minute clear time ended up going into about an hour, hour and a half and then we had to destroy the boxes. So that's about five hours because those boxes, the generators are far, far, far too tanky. And it's just, I mean, I would say dumb, but that would actually imply it takes two minutes to kill each box. Like they're just, they're just stupid. Anyway, room one can be an absolute ball buster if you are not prepared. I would suggest, absolutely suggest, having someone that is at least running foam, if not a jammer. The reason you would want one or the other is depending on what you would want to focus first. If you're gonna focus on general ads and the chunga, foam. If you are gonna focus on the warhounds, jammer. Depending on how you wanna play it, this is what you would do first absolutely though the things you will want to focus on are either going to be the chunga or the warhound simply because the chunga is just going to walk very slowly towards you while beaming you down one by one and if you get too close that stinger hive in his backpack is going to ruin you so yeah stinger hive on backpack first then go for his ammo chain the other issue is, while all this is going on, is those Warhounds are basically going to beeline through the middle of all of you, probably get behind you, and now cover is kind of redundant. So depending on how you want to do it, is up to you. But absolutely, either solve the Chunga issue or the Warhound issue. For area two, that massive dip in the middle can prove a problem. For this, I would suggest going to the right hand side by that weird tower utilizing either the cover of the overlook of where you at one point did see me where i did the initial phone from or moving around by that tractor on the right hand side that will cover most instances 
pushing through to the next area, you need to be quick because the moment you open those doors, you're either going to be in direct line of sight of those Chungas or someone's just going to run through like a crazy person and trigger the entire engagement. At which point, the mini tanks will push through very quickly if you do not pulse them quick enough and the Chungas are going to probably ruin your entire day. Chungas here are absolutely the priority. The mini tanks don't pose too much of an issue if you have someone running EMP sticky or jammer pulse, preferably one person running jammer pulse, one person running sticky, as the mini tanks do tend to stay within quite close proximity to each other. After you feel like you've cleared that room, look up. There will be a doorway with a balcony over it. You will get some air. Uh, we just call them rushers, the shotgun ladies. These will uh, come and give you a nice cuddle if you are not prepared or if you feel like you've just earned yourself a second to breathe. You haven't earned yourself a second to breathe. You're about to get rushed. Prepare yourself. After that, we enter the room where we are now. This is what I would call the first problem room. There's not really too much cover and things can get very hectic just from about four mini tanks and three warhounds that will ruin your day. Ideally here, I would suggest at least having one headhunter just to take out the drone ladies or the drone operators just so that you are able to breathe a little bit easier. After the drone operators, I would say the grenaders are probably going to be your next priority. The warhounds, as well as the mini tanks, shouldn't be too much of a problem if you have someone using the jammer pulse or sticky. Jammer pulse here would be better. It's a very large open room. You kind of want to try and grab all of them as regularly as possible rather than going one at a time. However, the left-hand side of the room where you saw myself and Luna run is actually a pretty safe route to work your way around them. That way you're able to split the spawn, whereas the two people staying up on the entrance to this room are able to snipe or at the very least DPS from downhill while the other two push them around and keep things moving and flowing. This room is a bit of a weird mixed bag. It is a lot of running back and forth and you can either just free range it and go nuts and everyone run everywhere. However, if you have a CC player, speaking from experience here, they will need babysitting because of the ad spawns basically coming and going everywhere at both sides. You will need someone to at least defend them because an easy way to get choked up on this is not to have CC. And if your CC goes down, you're in for a bad time. Luckily, we managed to pull through this weird little hiccup. Now, because the spawns tend to fluctuate from either the entrance or the backside, it can equate running around a lot, which will split your team up, which will split your DPS up. Easy way to get with the Chungus is everyone focus him at one time. Another way to do it is obviously go into the control room in the middle on the right hand side from the entrance. You can see it directly in front of me there on my right. This can be a good way to play, especially if you are skill build players. You can just sort of hunker down and let your drone and turret do the work. However, I would recommend at least having two people run seekers and periodically throw seekers out, simply because this forces the ads out of cover and alleviates the need for the enemies to go <laughs> unga bunga grenade or unga bunga drones. And because they either have infinite ammo or three million skill haste, these will eventually wear you down. There are many other ways on which you are able to do this. I am fully aware every team or person has their own weird and wacky ideas. These are just the ones that I picked up on running with these absolute legends to get basically through the Total Basin Legendary in approximately 30 minutes, assuming the last room actually went the way we intended it to. It didn't, but if it did, we estimate it would have taken us about 32 minutes, which is um, fun, I suppose. Seems like a pretty good time to me. Obviously, there is going to be a lot more optimization that needs to happen, a lot more figuring out in order to find more detailed and experienced guides with this. It is a relatively new mission, well, it's a very new mission, and people are still trying to figure out the ins and outs of it. 
at the moment as it stands as i said the biggest problem with tidal basin is the last room there is no real clean cut way in which to do that and as far as i can see at this point it is damn well down just to pure luck as to whether you do it or not and then you've got to deal with those boxes which from what we can figure have about three billion health each which is nuts but yeah this room is just crazy just run back and forth or hunker down if you hunker down be prepared for grenade and drone spam if you run around be prepared to babysit either whoever it is you're running as either a healer or a cc just because they will be the linchpin kind of of your team and if they go down you are going to have a bad time again i go down a lot in this by the way like regularly it's like my thing anyway that is this room cleared pretty much this is the last ad here and yeah they die pretty quick all right on to pretty much what is classed as the problem room or the uh, just throw everything at us room there are so many waves here it's unreal and the only ammo box we can find is either at the end of this area and this area is huge or back over the way we came in so you will need someone on gunner here you probably will still run out of ammo so no joke second weapons nothing like bullet king or slayer or something stupid this will be the make or break room if you make it this far you're either doing really well or you're just running on pure luck this will tell you if you're running on pure luck we'll see you back at the start line this room is just generally nuts your best bet is try and put two people where i currently am now and two people in the room to our left to stop them flanking i would argue if you're running a cc or a healer you will want to be on this side simply because you have a greater vantage point or field of view rather than looking through a very very tiny doorway if you are wanting to run a healer you will absolutely need opportunistic though i would actually argue perfect opportunistic where things are not going to be cc'd they will be shooting you back continually this is kind of one of the best things about cc is they don't shoot you back as much on legendary they will still shoot you back but they will have a little hiccup moment of trying to figure out their life first before they start pummeling your head in so you will need a way in which you're able to bolster your team's damage opportunistic preferably perfect opportunistic is the absolute best way to do this this room does i would argue absolutely require you to be quite aggressive once you've cleared out the initial waves you need to meet them at each spawn point otherwise you will be stuck here while they have ample opportunity to hunker down in cover and go unga bunga grenade as well as unga bunga drone meet them at each point as you can see we've cleared the initial wave we are now moving towards that spawn point if you have someone running sledgehammer this is a perfect time you can throw grenades over the top of this to reach it you can also shoot under the door so they're now on fire as you can see they also have sledgehammer propped and we're just going to foam in the middle we've already used the jammer to shut down the warhounds and we're just now just picking them off they're essentially in their own little kill box where they're so tanky and so numerous some of them will escape this is fine focus on the ad majority first after that you can then move into sweeping up the rest then comes your second chopper for your second wave again you can throw a grenade over this just a little bit extra to help keep damage on the go the moment those doors open as you can see i'm already getting my lines as to where the foams will hit you can now foam them you will also need someone to pull back slightly on the right hand well the left hand side because there will be an ad spawn coming in that way as well as you can see he's already directly behind me it's typically a warhound as it will run backwards and then around 
sometimes it's the chunga. Once you've dealt with that warhound, collect your team, collect yourself. You have about six seconds to get to the next spawn. The spawn is not that far away, it takes about three seconds to get to. Crossbow is really handy for breaking the chunga. Absolutely would recommend having someone with a crossbow. Maybe even a tip of the spear build with crossbow. I would be very mindful of the turrets. There are about two of them in this location. And once you're in, you do want to be in here. Because once you mop up the rest, there will be two more helicopters. One will spawn on the minigun on the left hand side one will spawn directly on the halfway mark on by the gate which is the one i am at now once they're foamed easily mopped up because well they're foamed they don't go anywhere the spawn point by the minigun will have a chunga spawn he will pose a threat especially if you are too close and not running a decent tanky set simply because on his way down that stinger hive will be going nuts this area can get pretty damn hectic just because the channeling effect that the area has you won't get one or two enemies trickle down you will get five or six so you will either need to push them very aggressively which can go very wrong very quick just because there are a lot of mini tanks or you can sort of hold back and let them channel to you but either way you will need to completely commit to one or the other if you don't commit you uh, end up splitting yourself or the spawn at which point you've then either just allowed them to surround you or those mini tanks will absolutely pick you apart because even after you kill the controllers they basically sit there as static sentries and are an absolute problem luckily with this area all but one of the spawns happens away from you in the direction that you are pushing so there are no 360 maneuvers or crazy crap that you have to deal with really unlike a lot of the other rooms where it's just either continuous or they like spawning in behind you there is only one spawn point that actually happens behind you and it is pretty much the very last wave so you can pretty much continually push to deal with the majority of the ads or what we do here is because minus me there is a very experienced team that have played together a lot in very high stakes situations they split their team composition for two of them to push forward while myself and one other go back to deal with the final ad at the back and that pretty much solves this area as you can see now the helicopter up front is spawning which means the one behind is also coming in the first helicopter sort of comes in halfway the one at the rear also spawns one behind you and it's only like four ads so it's not particularly difficult to deal with and once they're dealt with you can push forward to finish off the final ads So that's the, the last of the rear spawns done. Now I'm going to push forward to the far spawn, of which they are still dealing with, just because there's typically more of them. And I also believe there's probably a chunga as well. It's also a really bit of a nightmare area to actually push through to. But once you've cleared them out, you then enter this bit. This is kind of hectic and from the testing that I have done, I would almost argue that the shock trap is really, really handy here. Especially if you can actually get it to hit the targets you want, unlike what I just did. Foam can be of use if you can land them, but the problem is the moment you're sort of within range to use the foam, those warhounds and the mini tanks absolutely love your face and will penetrate it on repeat until you stop twitching which is uh, the issue I had about five times in a row. So Shock Trap for me kind of was the way to go. Although it is a slightly longer cooldown, the air of effect and utility it does potentially give is very useful. Overall, once we kind of ended up pushing to the far left-hand side behind that container, we had a lot more success rather than hanging back on the right-hand side where the entrance to this area actually is. 
This way we were able to actually catch the spawns as they were coming in. So by the time they were able to meet us in open combat, they were already halfway dead. The only issue would be the Chunga that spawns on the right hand side from that helo now. However, luckily, some of that shock from my previous shock trap made it over to him and kept him at bay for those lucky few seconds for Luna to absolutely demolish his face. The inside of this area here is actually not too bad. You pretty much have the upper hand on your positioning. Although there is a lot of cover for the enemy to utilize and move around in, they don't tend to really have that good of a vantage point and the overall effect of the area we are in, you just have the upper hand. You're able to channel them as well as funnel them into a kill box. Sadly, Luna didn't quite get this bit and uh, tried to bum rush the right hand side. So now Luna's dead. Unlucky Luna. But just to sort of show how easy this bit is, it does take a little bit of time, but we essentially have two DPS players and a useless YouTuber or useless failing YouTuber holding off a very large legendary spawn and even then I'm able to get up to Luna to revive him ready for the rear spawn that is going to come in with a helicopter on the back ramp the way you came in. It can be pretty hectic if you are not ready for it. I would recommend absolutely having your sound up for this part because you can hear the helicopter coming in. If you don't hear the helicopter in, by the time you see the red markers on your map, that's if you don't even have the directive on. By the time you see those red markers, it is too late. You will have a Chunga crawl so far inside you. He'll say mean things about your entire organ system. I don't know where I'm going with this. That was a very poor joke. But again, Shock Trap, quite handy here. Catches pretty much all of them, minus that one rusher. So that allows us to pick them off one by one as we need. And yeah, that is the rear spawn done pretty, pretty quickly. Here we have another example of the jammer pulse coming in clutch. As we, as I jam pulse, you can see the little markers of where each enemy actually is. This allows you and your teammates to have a little bit more information of where the precise location of each enemy is, instead of taking corners blind and meeting a shotgunner face to face. And minus these last four ads that is pretty much it guys the final room the boss room i've got no clue on there is a little necromancer build that's been coming in clutch with a lot of plays that i've been doing which i may do a video on but other than that those are kind of the only tips and tricks i really have for legendary total basin but yeah it's been an absolute pleasure to play with these guys and hopefully I can continue to do so. In the meantime, have fun, good luck, don't die. It's bad for the health.